Good morning, church. Good morning. Glad you're here. I, I hope that you had a wonderful um, Thanksgiving. And uh, say hello to all our friends who are watching online this morning as well. So would you stand with us as we start our service and we worship together? Majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your greatness. The oceans cry out to you. The mountains they bow. I'll join with the earth and I'll give my praise to you. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
Christmas is only four weeks away. Can you believe that? So we sing and we celebrate and we sing Christmas songs. Why? Because we can. And we sing Christmas songs because we only have so much time to sing Christmas songs together. So, because, you know, once Christmas season's over, we're not allowed to sing Christmas songs. <laughs> right? Okay, well, that's the rule, okay? So, are we ready? Yeah. Oh. Savior Jesus Christ, that incredible moment where God came.
came to dwell among us. Can we take a moment and greet one another? But first, everybody turn around, look at the camera, and wave to everybody who's watching at home today. Can you do that? Hello, everybody at home. All right. Now, let's take a moment and greet one another today, shall we? Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Again, I trust everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know we did. We had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, um, we are heading into the holiday season, the Christmas season now. So uh, a couple announcements in your bulletin. If you're uh, head of a ministry and you haven't got your budget to Janet yet, you might want to keep sharp objects away from her because she'll become. Nobody's gotten their budget. Nobody? Oh. All right, let me hand you something sharp. Can I, can I do it? Mine are all the same. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. That's cheating. So please, 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 because it really helps, Jan. It really helps the budget committee. So please, please, please do that as soon as possible. Um, if you're interested in helping ring bells for Salvation Army, talk to Beth Ann. They really need a lot of bell ringers, huh? Okay. And our Christmas worship night is going to be December 16th, which is really fun. If you haven't come before, please come. If you have come before, odds are you'll come again. Uh, Christmas Eve service, which is on Christmas Eve. Go figure. And uh, also, I found out this morning that Bruce Lyons, do you guys know Bruce and Yadi, newer, newer couple in our church? Bruce fell and broke his hip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow, that was a really big response. Yeah, so so uh, he is in the hospital right now, and uh, we just want to keep him in our prayers that God brings quick healing uh, to his uh, body. Is there anything else I forgot this morning, Dale? Uh, no. Yes, but no. Um, anything else? Okay, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you for all the things that you bless us with. We thank you for the season of Thanksgiving where we have the opportunity to just give you thanks for all that you bless us with. Father, we, we think of Bruce and pray for him this morning, Lord, that you bring quick healing to his body so that uh, he can get back to doing the things that he needs to do and get back to work and all those other things, Lord. So be watching over him. Lord, we thank you that you are an incredible, awesome God who desires to use us <laughs> to advance your kingdom. Sometimes I still don't quite get that, but Lord, we do thank you and we praise you for that. And we say to you, Lord, thanks for letting us be a part, but you do even more. You provide us with the resources we need to do the things you call us to do. And we take this offering today to give a portion back to say thank you, God, for all the things that you bless us with. Thank you, God, for all the things that you've given us. Thank you, God, for all the things that you do for us. So, Lord, as we take this offering this morning, we do so with a grateful heart. And we ask, Lord, that you would take this offering and bless it and use it to advance your kingdom here in our community and to the very ends of the earth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us, please, as we continue to worship together this morning? Skies 
a bed, a hand appeared to start. While angels sang to lonely shepherds, three wise men seeking truth, they traveled from afar, hoping to find the child from heaven. before the humble Prince of Peace. We bring an offering of worship to our King. No one on earth deserves the praises that we sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Lord, we bring an offering to you. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow. just our songs and not just our words, but Lord, we offer you our very hearts. We offer you all that we are, everything, our energy, our time, our love, everything, our worship, everything we offer to you, Lord, for you and you alone are worthy of our praise, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength God, glory and power be to you. Christmas season where we celebrate the fact that the Lord and Savior came to this earth to dwell among us, to live among us, to reveal who you are, Lord, to us. But more than that, to go to the cross and die for us so that we might have a relationship with you for all eternity. We could never say thank you enough, Lord. Lord, we pray for our time now as we look at your word and we spend some time looking at what your word has to say and the things that we can learn from you. I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that your word would just come alive in our hearts and that your spirit would stir us and that we would hear from you today. We ask this all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Well, as you know, we are headed into the Christmas season, and I want to do a series over the next month of, 
of uh, something that is very important when it comes to Christmas, and that is gifts. So uh, this morning's message is titled, Gift Bag or Wrapping Paper. Now before we get into the message, I have this little uh, public service announcement I'd like you to watch so that we have a, just a, a better mindset as we, as we talk about this this morning. Christmas is a special time of the year. It's when we celebrate the birth of Jesus with friends and family. But in our modern culture, many people forget the reason for the season. Christ was born as God's gift to the world, and gifted men came from afar and brought him gifts. It should be obvious to all that gifts are the true meaning of Christmas. If you love your family, skip the caroling this year and go shopping. Buy them gifts so that they will feel guilty if they don't buy you gifts. That's called the Christmas spirit. These have been Deep Thoughts from a Shallow Christian. So I share that with you this morning just to get us in a little better uh, perspective this morning as we talk about this idea. Gift bag or wrapping paper. Now, we really know that uh, Christmas is, is not all about gifts. Well, maybe it is all about gifts. Well, at least one gift, right? Correct? I'm going to ask you if you will take your Bibles, turn to John chapter 3, and we are going to look at John 3, 16 first this morning. And what does it say? Plain and simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We know this verse, don't we? This is a very well-known verse in Scripture. Now, look what it says. It says that uh, God gave his only begotten son. So there is this idea of gift giving. In the original text, it, the word gave there is like giving of a gift, okay? And this Christmas uh, season, we're going to look at uh, the message of the gospel and the meaning of Christmas through the idea of giving gifts. So you'll have to follow along with me on that idea for the next few weeks here. And we're going to be talking about gifts, especially the greatest gift that we have ever received, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I asked the questions this morning, gift bag or wrapping paper? You see, when we give a gift to somebody, especially during the Christmas season, we have a choice, don't we? We have gift bag or wrapping paper. Now, each option communicates something, doesn't it? Maybe it was a well-thought-out gift that you've bought way in advance and you've wrapped it meticulously to make it extra special. Maybe you're in a hurry, and gift bags work great for that, don't they? Quick, give me a gift bag and a little tissue to throw on top, right? I remember one year for my birthday, many, many, <clears throat> many years ago, I got a record album. Okay, now you know how many years ago from my oldest brother, Al, for my birthday. And he gave it to me, and it was still in the bag that he bought at the store. So I knew he bought it at the last minute. Would anybody like to know what the album was? Yeah. It was Ace Frehley's solo album. And some of you are going, who's Ace Frehley? But back in the New York groove, man. That was the big song on there. And he bought it for him. But you know what? It didn't make the gift any less special because I really wanted uh, that album, you know? I remember the record. And, and yeah, I do remember that he, he still had it in the, in the store's paper. But you know what? I didn't care. I didn't care because the gift was awesome. But gift bags have are a great invention, aren't they? I am sure a guy came up with the idea of gift bags. I'm sure. Right? Because it's so simple. And it's great for me because you know what? I can't screw up a gift bag. Okay, truth be told, I am terrible at wrapping gifts. Can I get an amen from my wife? Yeah, nice. Thanks you for your enthusiasm. In fact, the truth be told is that when Christmas comes, I don't wrap any of my own Christmas gifts that I give. <laughs> Lots of support from the family. Actually, my gifts, the ones that my wife and I give together, she wraps them all. The ones that I give to my wife, my daughter wraps for me. 
So, because if I wrap them, it looks like a three-year-old wrapped it. Because I'm terrible. I am terrible at wrapping gifts. My wife, she loves to wrap gifts, and her corners are perfect and everything else, but I always use way too much tape, but I know I can't mess up a gift bag. So, we have different things that you can present a gift in, and those mean different things. So, I want to talk a moment about your greatest gift. And here's what I want you to do. In, in a COVID-friendly way, a COVID-safe way, COVID-friendly, that... Does that make? Okay. I want you to turn to somebody next to you and share with you the greatest Christmas gift you ever received. Go ahead. Go. Turn to someone, share with them. Okay, cool, cool. Now, for some of you, for some of you, I can see you smiling because you're remembering that gift. For others, I'm assuming you're smiling underneath your masks. But you're remembering. And for some of you, it may be hard just to pick one gift. Now, I want you to share with the same person how that gift was wrapped. Go. Yes, it was. Now, some of you, a few of you may remember how it was wrapped. Some of you may, and most of you are just making stuff up because you don't remember, right? Because we don't remember how it was wrapped as much as you remember the gift itself. Some of you may remember what the wrapping paper looked like, but the wrapping wasn't that important, was it? It was the gift that was on the inside that was important. And today, we're going to look at how the greatest gift that we've ever received the gift of Jesus Christ. We're going to look at how that gift was wrapped. We're going to look at how Christ was presented to the world, how Christ was presented to us. And we're going to look at why that's so valuable and why that is so important. So let's talk about God's wrapping for a minute, okay? I'm going to ask you, if, you're, if you got your Bibles out, we're going to look at Luke chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 6 and 7. And this is what it says. It says, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You see, Joseph and Mary are heading to Bethlehem because Joseph was a descendant of David and the census was happening and because Joseph was a descendant of David, he had to go to Bethlehem to register for the census, okay? So they had this little problem here. Mary was pregnant and Mary was really pregnant and they knew that this was going to be an issue when they got to Bethlehem. Now, you really wouldn't plan a trip right before you were going to have a baby, would you? No. No. You wouldn't, because that would just be foolish. In fact, there's laws about women, not laws, but doctors tell women they can't fly after a certain date, right? Because you don't want to give birth on a plane, or you don't want to get, I was going to say knocked into labor, but forced into labor because of an altitude change or something strange like that, right? We don't travel when we're very pregnant. Well, you don't travel. I've never been pregnant. But... Uh, you, it, it says that there was no room for them at the inn. And it says what? It says that they wrapped Jesus in cloths. Now, I have to confess to you that I used to think that this was because they were poor and they couldn't afford like a onesie from Once Upon a Child or something, right? But what I learned later was they wrapped him in cloths because that's what they were supposed to do with babies. That's how they bundled Babies back in the day. There's two things to look at here. She wrapped him in cloths because she wanted to keep him secure. Just like we bundle babies today. She wrapped Jesus and was ready. Now, what does this communicate to us about Mary? First of all, Mary was prepared. I'm going to assume that she had cloths with her for when the baby was to be born. But here's the second thing that it says here. It says that they laid him in a manger. Now, we use that word manger because it's a nice word. 
And when we say the word manger, we always think of the birth of Jesus. But what is a manger? A manger is a feeding trough. It's, a, it's something you put food in for animals. That's what a manger is. So they put him in a manger, and I'll tell you that they're probably not very clean. Crystal, yours are always real clean, right? Yeah, but they're not very clean. But the reason they did this was because there was no room for them to stay at a house or at an inn or anything. This was all they could find. But I want you to catch this, friends. There's this incredible, incredible contrast here, isn't there? You have this mother who swaddles her baby, who is all prepared for her baby to be born, and she swaddles him and she wraps him up to keep him safe, and then she puts him in a feeding trough. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like, okay, let's take this child. We've just had this baby and we got them all cleaned up and we, got, we bought this special outfit for them to wear and we've got no place to lay them. Let's flip over this garbage can lid and lay the, lay the kid in the garbage can lid. That's almost what we're looking at here, right? Now, look at verses 10 through 12 in Luke chapter 2. What does it say? It says, but the angel said to them. Now, who is the angel talking to? The angel's talking to shepherds, so we're skipping ahead a little bit. It says, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of, Be of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And then the angel says this, you will, this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Now, that's pretty specific, isn't it? If I told you there was a special baby born, and you'll notice them because they're wearing a brand new outfit, and they're lying in a garbage can lid. That would be pretty specific because you don't think you'd find many babies like that. And the shepherds would say, okay, we're going to find a baby laying in a feeding trough. Okay. So the angel tells the shepherds about this. What did the shepherds think about this? A savior? The savior for mankind? Because right after the angel says this, a multitude of angels comes out and they all sing praises to God. And this amazing event and this baby who is the savior of mankind is going to be in a a feeding trough. Hmm. You see, friends, the arrival of Christ was less extravagant than it should have been, right? When we think about the coming, the arrival of our Savior, when we celebrate the Christmas season in our home, when we celebrate that incredible moment, do we do anything special with our house? If you drive by my house, you'll say, oh my gosh, there's almost too many lights on those houses. But there's no such thing as too many lights on a house, right? But we have lights on our house. And if you go in our house, we have a Christmas tree up with lights and ornaments. And we have little figurines around. We have five nativities now? Five nativity scenes set up in our house. We have a clock that plays Christmas songs every hour. We have all kinds of stuff. We've decked the house out for Christmas. Why? Because this is a special event, and this is a time to celebrate. This is how we welcome and celebrate the birth of our Savior. But the God of the universe sends his Son, and look how he arrives. There was far less fanfare here than any presidential election or coronation of any king in this world. There were no dignitaries there at the birth. Herod, you would think, would have, should have been on the guest list. But the only ones who were invited to the birth that night were some simple shepherds. And shepherds were kind of outcasts. Do you realize that? They were outcasts from the community. Why? Because they spent all their time with sheep. And they didn't smell real good. Not just the sheep. But God didn't have to do it this way, did he? God could have presented our Savior in many different ways. But God does it in this simple, humble way. So, it begs the question, so why like this? Why like this? Why would God have brought the Savior into the world like this? 
He could have been born in a, in a nice, warm home. Mary could have given birth in a nice, warm bed. He could have been born at a time where they didn't have to travel. It was really lousy timing with the census. Of course, it was all part of God's plan, but I don't want to get into that right now. Not to mention, it would have been great for Mary to have some family around for the event and for the help and support of the birth of the child. Think about this, moms, for a second. It's time for you to give birth, and the only person around is your husband, and it's your first child. Wouldn't that be great? I was on crutches for the birth of our first child. I would have been absolute, I was absolutely no help whatsoever. But this is what Mary was experiencing. Imagine not even having people and family around to celebrate. As grandparents, we can't wait for a grandchild's born because we're there at the hospital, right? So we can see the baby, we can hold the baby and congratulate our daughter and make sure she's good and healthy and everything else too. But God chose for our Savior to be born outdoors to a couple who was far from home in a place where a baby shouldn't be born. Why? Why would God do this? Well, I think there are some reasons why. I think God presented Christ in this manner for some very, very specific reasons. So follow, me, follow along with me here on this. From the very beginning of Jesus' life here on earth, Jesus knew what it was like to be poor. He knew what it was like to be cold. He even to be hungry. Throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ, we see that he knew what it was like to be poor, cold, hungry, and tired, sad, and even to be angry. Now, why is this so important for us to understand? It's important to me, I'll tell you, because I know that my Lord understands me. When I'm tired, or I'm cold, or I'm sad, I know Jesus gets it. I know he gets it. I know he understands me. I know he understands all of us. He understands our sufferings. He understands the difficulties that we face. He understands the pain and anguish that we endure when we face challenges. Isn't that a little comforting to know that? Look what it says in, in Hebrews chapter 2. It says, but we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, talking about Jesus, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory to perfect the author of their salvation through Suffering. So it was necessary. It was necessary for Jesus to experience what he experienced. It was necessary for him to open the way for us to come into heaven. Jesus even understands when we're tempted. Oh, that's awesome. How many people have ever been tempted before? If you're not raising your hand, you're a liar. All right. We've all been tempted at different times. But Jesus even understands that. Look a little further. Verse 18, it says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. <laughs> That's awesome. God had Christ experience the things Christ experienced so that he can come to our aid, he can come to our side when we are facing difficulties like temptations. Jesus understands because he's been there. Through the birth, life, and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord identifies with our struggles. For me, I don't know about you, but for me, that is a great, great comfort. We can never pray to Jesus and say, you know what, Lord, you just don't understand. <laughs> yes, he does. He's been there. He's experienced what we experience we can't say, Lord, you don't understand what I'm going through right now, because he does. 
Look at uh, chapter 4 of Hebrews. It says this. And this is talking about the great priest. And it's actually a reference to Christ. This is, therefore, since we have a great high priest, who is Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We come to him with confidence. We come to him with boldness and confidence because we know he understands because he's been there. You know, it's really comforting in life to talk to someone who's been where you are. That's why support groups exist, right? Support groups for people who are recovering alcoholics, recovering drug addicts, people who are going through grief, the loss of a loved one. Why is that valuable to sit with those people? Because you know they understand, right? It's so hard when you try to communicate something to somebody or you're hurting or something or you're struggling with something and people just don't understand what you're experiencing. That's so hard. But what a blessing to know that our Lord, unlike politicians, Jesus has actually walked in our shoes. He understands us. You see, friends, I believe that God presented Christ to us in his birth and in his life to a poor and simple family so that Jesus could relate to the challenges and the struggles that, he, that we face. Let's be honest, Jesus could have been born to a really wealthy family, right? But he wasn't. We're all born to different families, right? We're all born to different experiences, right? God chose to bring his son to this earth in a very simple and humble way. I believe another reason that God presented Christ to us in this way is because it wasn't the presentation that was of great value, but it was Jesus Christ himself. Have you ever seen, and this happened, haven't happened in a long time in England, but have you ever seen when a king or a queen is coronated? When they have their coronation? We've probably mostly seen it in movies because Queen Elizabeth's been queen of England for like 100 years, it seems like. But... The fanfare, the celebration, the ornamentation, every little detail is extravagant and spectacular. And do you know why that is? Is it because they're totally worthy of it? No, it's because they had to convince the people that this person is now your king or queen. Don't look at the person, look at the fanfare. They have to be great because look at all this other stuff. Everything sparkles. They must be great, right? Do you understand? That through the history and through time, there were many kings and queens who were definitely not worthy of the position and the title that they were given. But if we dress it up enough and we dress up everything around it, people will be filled with this sense of awe that surrounds this individual. Maybe they won't notice that they're... Uh, flawed person who's maybe not a good person. If you think of the greatest gift that you've ever gotten, it doesn't matter if it was wrapped in newspaper or a brown bag. It's the gift itself. Christ's birth, life, and death Allow him to say, I understand, I get it, I've been there, I love you. And it causes us not to look at the fanfare around Christ, but Jesus Christ himself, the Son of the living God, our Savior. See, that's why when the angel appeared to the shepherds and said, the Savior to mankind is born, explaining the immensity and this awesomeness of who Jesus is, and then, uh, yeah, you're going to find him. Uh, um, he'll just be wrapped in cloths, yeah, and he'll be laying in a feeding trough. Because the wrapping was irrelevant. The coming of the King of Jesus Christ didn't need ornamentation. Because how can you improve on Jesus? Do you get it? 
Are you with me? So we understand, as I said, I'll say it again, Christ's birth, his life, and his death allow him to say to us, I understand, and I get it, and I've been there, and I love you. Therefore, therefore, as the writer of Hebrews said, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So as Christmas approaches, and even beyond Christmas, we need to remember the simplicity of Jesus' arrival communicates many things to us. One, it communicates that Jesus didn't need the extra fanfare. He didn't need the sparkles. I believe that the angel appeared to the shepherds and not to everybody, because what happened? After the angel told them what was going to happen, the angels couldn't hold it back, could they? It says uh, suddenly a multitude, and we're going to talk about this later, uh, suddenly a multitude appears, and they're all just shouting the praises of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It, it, if they went everywhere doing that, they couldn't keep this thing, oh, okay, keep it low-key. Why? Because we want people to focus on Jesus, not on everything else. The other thing I want you to remember is Jesus understands and he gets you like nobody else can. And he understands you like nobody else can. And he loves you like nobody else can. So scripture tells us we can come to him boldly because he gets it. He, Jesus is never going to go, oh, quit whining, you big baby. Jesus is never going to say, oh, you're just stupid. Jesus is going to say, I understand and I love you. Amen? Amen? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Savior Jesus Christ, and we do thank you for the manner in which he came to this earth. Help us to remember through this season just what an incredible God he, you are and how incredible our Savior is. And help us to keep our hearts focused on that gift, the gift of Jesus through this season, and not be uh, distracted too much by the fanfare and the rapping. So as we leave and travel through this Christmas season, may we declare the greatest gift we've ever received, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a blessed day.